Hi, I'm Babs Hogan. In 2011, I traveled throughout the state for the Texas Cheese Tour, where I interviewed numerous cheese professionals, chefs, and a few baby goats. I recently interviewed two new shop cheese owners, whose business will open this February 2017. Here's their story. Hi, I am here to announce something very special that's happening in the Texas cheese world. I am here in Georgetown, Texas with the Stanzeskis of the famous, uh, at least future famous, Stanzeski Cheese and Wine Shop. And I would love to introduce you to these wonderful cheese people. Um, this is Jan and Chester Stanzeski. Tell us what got you sparked in the cheese world. Well, it, it's kind of uh, been a, a zigzag type role. We initially started taking wine classes at the Texas Wine School in Houston. And through the wine school, we started meeting a whole different array of individuals and people. And we met the Lindsay at uh, Houston Dairy Maids, and we met the Antonellis with the Antonellis in Austin. And it sparked our interest, and from there, we just expanded our our focus and the wine was initially just for our own uh, our own education but now we've kind of focused on cheese and the fascination of cheese and it's now taken us from the industries or the work occupations that we're doing now to something completely different so it's it's a whole new venture for us Jan, I noticed on your website that you've attended many schools and different classes. Tell us about those classes. We've had so much fun. We started about a year and a half ago by going up to New York to Murray's three-day boot camp, and that was just a blast. It was such a good introduction to cheese. Three days of learning about the types of cheeses and talking to um, people that are in the industry, people that that were cheesemongers, but also just cheese enthusiasts. Good intro. Then we went in the fall of last year, 2015, to San Francisco, to the Cheese School of San Francisco, a four-day intensive cheese class that included a one day of opening a cheese shop by the numbers. So there was reality check. Is this something we really want to do? And it was really fun. We enjoyed it. We learned a lot more about cheese at that school. Um, this year we, we took another class that was con considerably more intensive. We went up to Vermont to the cellars at Jasper Hill. The Academy Opus Cassius taught by Laurent Mons who is a French affineur and fromager. He's a cheese rock star in France. And we had a wonderful four days of working in the cheese caves in Vermont at Jasper Hill and just learning more and more about cheese. And it just seems like our passion is growing as we do that. Um, we had the opportunity this fall to actually get in the cheese make room at Eagle Mountain Farmhouse Cheese Company in Lipan, Texas. And we actually got to make cheese, and that was a really fun experience. So all of these cheese classes have broadened our passion and excitement and enthusiasm for this cheese world that well, we're living in. It also takes us back to not just my parents and, and aunts and uncles, but for generation, cheese making, my, my father didn't make cheese, but sausage, along with several other relatives. And, and this is, in a sense, this was survival food. And we've, we've kind of have forgotten that now. And so as you go and take these classes in, in charcuterie and cheese making, you realize this is what people did to survive thousands of years ago in Europe and, and Africa and, and Asia. And it's winter wintertime survival food. So it was really, it really brought home that our ancestors didn't waste a single thing right. and and it was it was i mean it was an, an awakening ancient, it's yeah. an ancient art yeah yeah that's true 
So you mentioned in our earlier conversation off camera uh, something about some wine classes, cheese classes. Can you tell us about your classes? Yes, we both have taken the uh, Wine Spirit Education Trust, level one and level two. We have completed level three. We need to take the test. We both take, have taken the French Wine uh, Scholar Program. And then through the Texas Wine School, we had an opportunity to to do a te Texas specialist of wines. And it focused solely on Texas soils and what's happening in the Texas wine industry. And then I- I think that's the one I'm the most proud and of. She, she our, really is. Is our Texas wine uh, specialist certification. And, and then I've also taken the California Appalachian specialist. And then I got just this year my level one sake certificate through the school. So that's Yay. that's something completely different. Like I said, as we started this just doing wine classes, all of a sudden all sorts of other, you know, you start meeting people, you start connecting with people, and all of a sudden it's like, I didn't know anything about sake. Well, now I know a little bit about sake. And <laughs> through that also I got a uh, certificate in tequila. I'm not a tequila fan but I was able to go through a tequila certification. And then... And he also went to New York and got an olive oil yes, sommelier level, certification. Level one in, in <laughs> olive oils. And I did, not, I did not realize olive oil is very much like wine in terms of doing the sensory analysis and the tastings. And so, once again, met a whole new group of individuals and it's like, wow, the... Uh, food world is really vast and, and has a lot of interesting characters in it. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to talk to you about your experience at the American Tea Society. So tell us about your experience. You know, going to my very first ACS conference this year was such a treat and I, getting into the industry, it was a good uh, opportunity to meet people who are passionate about cheese as we are growing in our passion and so and yes there are people from all walks of life really um, interesting backgrounds but one key factor is they are all passionate about this wonderful artisan cheese movement that is going on in the United States and and so many wonderful cheese makers, cheese mongers, and then the people who sell the equipment to make the cheese. There was all, all types of folks there, but it was a great learning experience and I look forward to Denver next year. It'll be a great opportunity to continue to network and, and get to know people. I'm, I'm, I didn't make it to Des Moines this year. I'm hoping to go to Denver next year, but just to kind of touch on what Jan was saying, even though I didn't go to the conference, I've met a lot of individuals, and they're extremely supportive. Sue, uh, Sue Sturman, Sturman mm -hmm. you know, Dave Eagle, they're, they're willing to help give advice, and it's just been fascinating to meet them. And, yeah. you know, like I said, we, earlier we had met a couple named Larry and Linda, Linda Falace mm -hmm. up in Vermont. We took the cheese making class with them, and they're just, they're, wonderful individuals and so everybody in the cheese industry and the wine industry has really been very supportive when we contact and ask questions and and just try to help us focus so that we can stay mm -hmm. in in cheese tell us what you have to offer for that timid cheese customer well in a sense we are the timid cheese customer because we still cannot pronounce all the cheeses. We still do not know all the terms. We're hoping to grow with, with our customers. But one of the things we want them to understand is that there's far more than just the cheeses that you find at regular retail outlets. And, and that there are cheeses within, say, a blue cheese, that there's different varieties of blue cheese that you can go and taste from, from very mild to some incredible earthy gooey blues from, from France. And so we're hoping that as people come in and, and, and start to ex grow with us, that, that it's a, a journey that both of us can be involved in, or Jan and I can be involved, in, not only in our evolution, but the customer's evolution. And I, I think what I have now found is there really is no bad cheese. There are cheeses that we're unaccustomed to in our culture, but 
you know what, there's a lot of cheeses out there and each one has its own personality and it's, you can stay with goat cheeses, you can stay with sheep cheeses, you can go across the board. Uh, one of my favorite comments that I say, keep saying to myself is mild to wild, you start, can start off with a fresh cheese and just work your way through and why, why stop with something wrapped in saran wrap when you can experience a whole different gamut of cheeses. Well, that was interesting, wasn't it? I think they've done their homework and I think they are ready to open the doors. So take a moment to watch the slideshow that I presented, that I've created, and also listen to the great music of John Morgan. You're going to love this song. If you want to watch all of the interviews that I've already done, you can go to TexasCheeseTour.com and go to the videos page and you'll see all of the participants. I think there are 34 so far. <clears throat> First, I want to, before I do that, I want you to be aware that uh, Dan Hogan made some wonderful homemade yogurt from a great source of uh, milk from a, a farm in Plano, Texas, made from raw milk. So delicious, creamy, oh my gosh, so good. So thank you very much for watching today's interview and uh, just be keep in touch and I hope to see you soon. And now let's listen to some beautiful music. <laughs> 